Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take our first hot topic, and this talks about the war in Israel, between Israel and Iran. And this says our response will be much larger. Iran wants Israel. And they were talking about, um, you know, the, the attack that they have made to Israel. And they said if Israel retaliates, well, um, this, whatever they've seen, is going to be larger. Now, joining me to have a conversation is um, Dr. Kach Onanuju is a political scientist, and we also have Festus Tokumbo as a conflicts and development analyst, and is joining us from the UK. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Good morning. Okay, so we're looking at, um, you know, some people might call this a shadow war between um, Israel and Iran. Now, let's start with you, Festus. I mean, you're a conflict and development analyst. So can you just help us make sense with what's going on right now? Uh, thank you for thank you, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, over the years, there have been a conflict between Iran and uh, Israel in the Middle East, basically over the hegemon of the region, but, but it's, it was basically a, a proxy war between the two countries. And this is about the first time that Iran we conducted a direct attack on Israel soil. And there are a lot of things that that, got, that can in, implies. Iran, over the years, have been using, engaging the, the non-state actors in the Middle East to promote its interest, mm. to stabilize the region and attack Israel. But this time around, it chose to attack directly, which was a consequence of the attack on this uh, consulate in, in, in Syria on 4th of April, which it claimed that Israel was responsible. Mm -hmm. Basically, based on the principles of uh, reciprocity, the idea to have been for Iran to attack the Israeli consulate in Syria or any of the Middle East country. But it chose to attack directly on Israeli soil. So there are going to be a lot of implications. There are going to be consequences. And, and though, although the West is not interested in an admiral of major war in the Middle East, and if they have been trying to engage Israel, they should not attack directly. But I believe they are going to be response from Israel. Yeah. And, and Iran has also warned that if there was a response, they are going to conduct uh, a pre-style attack on Israel. So basically, there are many things that are involved in this scenario. And um, I know, I mean, Israel is, a, is an nuclear armed state. Iran is not. Because the, the world is not interested in Iran armed nuclear weapons because they believe it's a threat to the global peace and security. But I believe that when you see a state who is not a nuclear, nuclear armed country in, uh, attacking the nuclear armed country, that must, that must totally be involved that there may be have some, some kind of bad dragon promises from any of the security council members. So, I mean, the, the, the fact that the, the situation in, in, in the Middle East is it's not a political scenario, mm. from my own opinion. Okay, so let me, let me move um, over to our other guests. Now, we're, we're seeing this happening, right? You know, with Israel, Iran. We know about the israel Hamas war that, you know, started um, in, in October, right? And, you know, even Iran now is threatening Israel, if I can say that, that even if the U.S. tries to help them or retaliate, then they might just also get something coming for them. And so, Dr. Katch, what do you think um, with, you know, the, the U.S., you know, even trying to help um, Israel in this case? Well, I would say there was warning from the U.S., uh, you heard what uh, Senator Schumer said. And even President Biden himself telling Israel to be very calm in its responses. Mm. I believe Israel has overdone the responses. And it's now forcing people like Iran to react. Mm. Iran is reacting to the attacks. that occurred at its bases in Syria. And because its personnel were killed, it now feels that it has to respond to Israel's uh, attacks. And uh, the USCS have come in to say, Israel, hold your fire. Because once you start replying to Iran, you risk the possibility of a wider war. Mm. And this is what 
we all have tried to prevent all along, but it looks like we are being guided into a wider war due to the consequences of an overbearing Israel. Israel has been appealed to by all nations to actually become and bring down its amount of shelling, not only in the Gaza, but also in Rafa. And I believe whatever you do to those civilians there in Gaza and now in Rafa will always force a reaction from the wider Arab world. And now we're seeing uh, Iran firing back at Israel. And for your information, do not call Iran a no nuclear country. It is a nuclear bearing country. What you do not know is the capacity of nuclear arsenal that Iran does have. But does it have it? Yes, it does. But don't forget, the Americans mishandled the inspections. And because of that, Iran has gone on its own to do what it always wanted to be able to manufacture nuclear weapons, but it's been saying it's manufacturing nuclear weapons because of its domestic needs, but we now know that those nuclear capabilities could be extended to an offensive capability, and of course we all know that Iran has delivery systems as it has shown you, it did it through its attack on the Saudi oil field, it's also now showing you that it can also deliver into Israel so we don't want this war. Israel has nuclear capability. We believe so. Iran also is believed by the international community to possess nuclear capability. Nobody wants a shootout between these nuclear-powered nations. Yeah. And we are appealing to everybody to please move in right now and try to hold Israel to stop the sustained killings of harmless uh, Palestinian civilians in both Gaza and also in the Rafa areas. Mm. Okay, so uh, there are speculations that there might just be a third world war. And, you know, you, uh, you've you also mentioned, Dr. Katch, that it might just be a wider war if Israel tries to retaliate. And so the U.S. is also asking them and other people are asking them to just be calm. Now, if Israel decides to retaliate, what are we going to see? What, what could just be, what could the war look like? Well, it's not what could the world look like. Between Israel and Iran, you could have a mutually assured destructive behavior. But what will it look like when we know last year, the U.S. Defense Secretary, Mr. Lloyd Austin, did present to the Congress, I know the perceptions and conjectures which show that the United States was actually preparing for a war this year. And it said inevitably that China looks like a partner for a third world war. And we have now seen the combination of the BRICS nations. We've also seen the calibrations in Ukraine to the U.S. induced Ukraine behavior, which has forced uh, uh, Russia into pulverizing Ukraine into the dark ages. And of course, we know as far as you have companies like BlackRock and uh, companies like Vanguard, companies like Raytheon, companies like uh, 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 Northrop Grumman and Boeing, and all those people are swelling around about their reconstruction capabilities and the money is to be made. War looks like it is already very inevitable from the American side, but they do not want to engage in a wider war with the Arabs and also in a wider war with China and now with Russia. I think that will spell doom yeah. for uh, humanity. I think we should do everything possible to stop it. You can also see that the French in desperation about the Russian incursion into the Sahel is also gearing up for war. So there are quite a lot of countries who due to their zero-sum calculations are insisting that a result to war maybe what they need to actually recalibrate the losses that they have gotten. In this case, I'm talking about France. In this case, I'm also looking at the United States and its fear 
and the resurgence of China. So we have problems all over the places. We have red flags all over the world. And we pray that the international community are able to come together and suspend whatever Israel is doing because Israel has overshot its own local boundaries. Hence, the reaction from members of the Arab community. And that's what we're seeing from Iran. We pray this is able to gain arrest as quickly as possible. Okay, um, so let me move over to Festus. Now, Festus, with all that is happening, you're seeing um, Israel, Iran, you're seeing the Israel Hamas, you're seeing Russia, Ukraine, you're seeing all of this. Is there a possibility of a third world war breaking out really soon? Of course. And, what, and the impact, I beg your pardon, and the impact that it will have on other nations. I mean, we are not so close to, um, to you know, most of these countries because Russia, Ukraine, European, you're seeing Israel, you know, the Middle East, you know, you're seeing all of this. But for us here in Nigeria, because I'm sure that's what people want to know, what is the impact if a third world war was to break within all of these countries? What is going to be the impact for us Nigerians? Uh, so, thank you for your question. And as I said earlier on, the West is not interested in the major conflict between uh, Iran and uh, Israel for many reasons. One, domestic factor, because there's going to be an election in the US by like November this year. And this year also, there's a going to be an election in the UK. And the West is also preoccupied with the uh, Russian Ukraine war. Yeah. So, an a, 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 a of war between Israel and, uh, I mean, and Iran we divert the Western attention from the Ukraine. And this, that may be a victory to, victory to Russia in the Ukraine. And the West is not that. So they are not interested in the war. But Iran, the question of national integrity that Iran will want to retaliate the East Africa on his soil. So the situation has been very, managed very critically so that the world not, uh, not, they don't, they don't break out on a global scale. And combining the security councils, I, I know yesterday there was, a, there was a motion that Iran should be so, suspended, so recession. But you know, these five countries are now on the same case, so they are not going to pass that motion. And I know that the G7 will want to impose sanctions on Iran, but that may not bring the needed consequence out of the case more than 15 years ago. Because today, Iran economy is why it's well diversified. Most of the top, top three partners are, are China, uh, 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 China, Pakistan, Turkey. Uzbekistan. So those, those countries will not be on the same page on imposition on Iran. So as I said, the situation is very, it's not it's unpredictable. And if, if there's, as, as regarding Nigeria, this brought up with uh, break war, uh, break up the third world war. Nigeria, Nigeria has not been, has been also been playing a policy, a policy of neutrality in international relations. So I think Nigeria may not be a target if, I mean, if there's a policy of the third world war as a consequence of the ongoing crisis in Russia, Ukraine, and other countries in the world. So, uh, what, what uh, the, the most important thing is that, I mean, Israel should be pressurized from the West not to retaliate, which I, I, I'm not too convinced about that. And Iran, as I said earlier on, Iran has been threatening the US and threatening to Israel that if they retaliate, they're going to conduct a wider attack on Israel. And that shows that, that what that shows is that there may have been some countries who behind the scene that are giving its, their support that, okay, go ahead, we are behind you. I, I, so that is it. I mean, this is a very, it's not unpredictable at the moment and anything can happen. But what you want is that, I mean, the Iran should, Israel should relax and try to manage it diplomatically, which I don't see the positive, positive of that. And, that because Israel is, I mean, Israel is surrounded by many enemies, and you can see the attack on Israel was conducted by four countries from, from Yemen, from, um, from Syria, from Israel. It's only Jordan that was not involved in that attack, that was supported the West in corrupting an anti missile system. So, this is very, it looks very skinny, it's very unpredictable. Anything can happen, but what the West needs to be doing at the entire community to be putting more pressure on Israel to stop, to stop the attack. Because Israel will not engage. In the war with Iran, without the support of the U.S. Another thing is that if Israel chooses to continue in the conflict, the U.S. will be forced to involve in the, in the, in the war because it is permanent in the U.S. foreign policy that Israel's God Israel must always be protected, and the West will do the, do say. So it will be very brutal. And nobody, wait, 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 we can't say we just have to wait for what is happening and see how, how everything went on. Mm.
Well, we hope that a second, um, a third world war doesn't break out because at the end of the day, um, we want a, we want a nation, not just a nation. We want a world, you know, that everyone is okay with the other person. So, because war is never good. And, you know, some of those countries, they have some nuclear weapons in their arsenal. So you don't want a situation whereby they just deploy it and other parts of the world are also affected. In fact, I was, you know, watching a documentary on what could possibly happen if all the nuclear weapons were to be deployed and we'll just see the, the, the whole world, the entire world go into a cold winter. And that's what we do not want. So now, if there's going to be another solution, I'm sure peace treaty should be the case. So, Dr. Katch, um, don't you think this is where they come to the table and just have some form of dialogue and have a peace treaty to ensure that, okay, everyone is okay, we're not fighting because war is never good. So how can a peace treaty come into play here? The number one ingredient of a peace treaty is the international creation of the two-state solution. Mm -hmm. I think we've gotten to a point where the Israelis have now seen the actions of 1948 have come to a stage where you must now allow a two-state solution with the Palestinians and the Israelis living side by side. So the idea of prompting up Hamad as a strategy to Keep divided the Palestinian struggle, I think that has failed from an Israeli standpoint. But because, yes, Israel is the main patron of Hamas. Israel propped up Hamas and made sure money flows to Hamas as a way to divide the Palestinian liberation organization. It has succeeded in doing that by also keeping Hamas afloat with its incendiary actions and of course right now with the hamas attack on israel and israel's retaliation what you have now seen is an international condemnation of both israel and the initial attack by hamas but how do we get out of this hamas seems to have won its original strategic stra game which is prompt an internationalization of the palestinian issue in a way that America will not be able to gain the Arabs peace with Israel without tabling the Palestinian issue on the table. That's what has happened now. Hamas has forced the Palestinian issue on the table. So you can no more have the peace treaty with the Arabs without discussing the Palestinian issue. So if we are going to now talk about, as you mentioned, a peace treaty, the issue about its two states solution for the Palestinians and the Israelis is top on the agenda. Even those outside who have been backing Israel to the hilt now understand Israel was a gamble created after 1948, following the creation of Turkey in 1923, following the defeat of the Ottomans in the First World War. Now, we're looking at all that has happened there. The defeat of the Ottomans, subsequent creation of Israel, Israel's attempt to behave in a way as if the Palestinians don't exist. Now they have seen that that thing, yes, could be successful for some time, but would not permanently be successful in the long term. We have now become challenged with the issue of the two-state solution. If we are going to talk about the peace treaty, as you've mentioned, the two-state solution will be right on the table. It's not just a peace treaty between Israel and the Arabs, no. Mm. It will be a peace treaty between Israel and the Palestinians and the entire international community becoming the guardians of that peace treaty. No more a peace treaty dictated by Israel. It will not work. Mm. The U.S. have seen its creation of a 51st state in Israel has worked, but its long-term security cannot be guaranteed if it is not forced to live alongside the Palestinians in peace and harmony in a way that outsiders could be the guarantors. Mm -hmm. And those outsiders that must be the guarantors are these people you're seeing right now. First, it was Hamas. 
Then it was talk about the invasion of Lebanon. Should Hezbollah get in? Then it was the Houthis shooting. Now from the Houthis, it has now accelerated into Iran. Tomorrow, what could it be? Mm. Turkey is on the side working. Don't forget <laughs> that. And Saudi Arabia has now made peace with Iran, broken by China. Don't forget that. So it's not going to be easy for Israel to live among the Arabs and yet refusing to agree to the two-state solution. I believe it is all deja vu again, and we have come back to a need to sit at the table and calibrate a holistic peace for the entire region. You cannot keep one without the other. I believe the peace treaty you're talking about will be a peace treaty that guarantees the two-state solution being done by the international community since Israel has shown that it cannot be trusted, as President Trump said, and Trump seems on the verge of an electoral, uh, you know, destruction. So you don't have friends anywhere. Inside the current Repub uh, Democratic Party, you have people like the Senate leader, Senator Schumer, telling Israel to change its ways. You even have the Biden administration telling Israel it's gone too far. Mm. Don't allow, you know, desperation by countries like France to damage the current picture. Let us concentrate on the Israeli-Arab crisis, resolve that problem. Don't allow France's desperation to push the international order into a third world war. That I believe. I don't think the Arabs are the problem of the Americans. I think the problem of the Americans is the resurgence of a new China. That is something you cannot play. I don't think the Russians are their problems. I think their biggest problem is the resurgence of an economically powerful China that also seems to have a lot of resources to calibrate some kind of military situation in. And I believe that's what we should look towards, not right. worrying yourself about the Arabs or mm -hmm. about the Russians. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that, you know, a peace treaty might just be in the works. And like you've said, um, the international community should be guarantors for this because we cannot just trust Israel would do um, what they've said that they would do. And if we're saying peace treaty, they need to be accountable to that. Anyway, so I'm going to come to you, Festus. I mean, you're a conflicts and development analyst. Um, and so my question to you is, what's the way forward? Can't nations just coexist and make sure that there's no war if they need to do that what's the way forward how do you advise thank you for your question and you know because i mean the way forward as my colleague apparently said is a two-state solution in the middle between israel and palestine though i mean periodically claimed that he offered that solution to palestine many times but they rejected it it was later they wanted it then they did that israel said no and this major uh, u.n res re re resolution and uh, international uh, resolution of so propose a two-state solution to Israel and Palestine. And that is, I mean, it's not negotiated. It's, it's, it's a question of time before that is implemented. That will address the problem between the Israel and Palestine. And when it comes to Iran, the Iran scenario is, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's more, it, I mean, it's, it, it, I can come in my matter of audience that, I mean, the world has to react, the UN has to react, though the UN has not been effective in addressing global conflict and peace because of its weakness in many, I mean, in many uh, aspects of uh, humanitarian, but the 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 the, the security council, I mean, needs to be on the same page in managing the situation critically. But the problem is they have a diverse interest, and I, I still believe that as long as the Israel and Iran is concerned, there are there are countries, my colleague has said, that have pro promised Iran to I mean to continue its escalation against Israel. And I'm not allowed the, the, the Russian factor because Russia believes that a full blow war between Israel and Iran will divide Western attention. So it got upper eight in the U Ukrainian war. So as you said, we need peace. We need peace. But the problem about that is because of conflicting interests of nations. But nevertheless, the international community should continue to pressurize Israel to to comply with international resolution, while Iran right. is also specialized to to complete co, 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 to comply with international resolution for the sake of the Middle East. Mm.
All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, we just hope that this war comes to an end and all nations can just live in peace and harmony. We want to say thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right, I've been speaking with Dr. Katch Ononuju. He's a political scientist and also Festus Zukumba. He's a conflicts and development analyst who's joining us from the UK. And we've just been talking about the war between um, Israel and Iran. And now we'll go on a short break. And when we return, we're talking about the fact that an Oshun monarch has expressed his discomfort over Nigeria's preparedness for state police. See you soon. Stay with us.